right. Okay. Um, Welcome back to the off the state. Oh, oh James. Hang on a minute, <laughs> Welcome to off the stage podcast. After you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to the off the stage podcast. <laughs> uh, I am Connor Michael. <clears throat> this is James Berry, and this time we are joined with Nick Gladish. Welcome to the show, mate. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. You know what? I'm feeling a bit bunged up. <laughs> yeah, in my sinuses. That's uh, Nick so was saying the same, wasn't it? I'm with me hot honey and I'm, and I'm perfectly fine. So I'll just stand here, so, uh, so not to, yeah. so not to, not to catch it. <laughs> show off. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just dive straight into it. What are you drinking? Oh, lovely pint of Guinness, eh? Yeah, yeah. I think so. that's a hat trick there. Yeah. I'm rocking everything. So there's a nice. reason we are <laughs> drinking Guinness because we are at the fantastic Dubliner, and if you're in an Irish pub, you're gonna have to get yourself a Guinness, aren't you? It's, uh, that's that's nice the law. It's good, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. Uh, Dublin on the quayside. Some of you may recognise it from mine and James's posts. We more or less live here, to be fair. Um, and they very kindly let us start recording on Thursday mornings. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you very much, Dan, and the team. Um, anyway, to the podcast. So, Nick, you were saying to me before James got here, because he was late. Um, it's no, I wasn't not I was just yourself. I, I wasn't late. No, that was early. I arrived precisely when I meant to. Which was? 12.03. <laughs> I made it five past 12, but... Oh, well, fine then. Semantics. <laughs> we told the actor to get here for 12. We get here yeah. half an hour. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, you do gigs as well with a band. It's not just yourself. Yeah, it's um, a gig. So obviously I'm, I'm, as Nick Gladish, but a gig. Um, we have a band called the Nick Gladish Band, which features um, John Timney and Adam Cornell from... Hot Sauce, I might have heard of them. Yeah. yeah fronted by is it Richard Gill, Richard Gilroy. Um, Shannon Pearl, who um, provides yep. all the harmonies and things in the band, especially in the studio when we've been recording yeah. this past year. And uh, Tim Higgins um, on lead guitar, guitar duties and things. So, yeah, it's the five of us. And we've just started gigging again um, after well, a year and a half absence. And we started the uh, Sinking Ship tour last week. So we played Stockton. I was down in London on Monday, just gone, and then playing tonight um, at Bobbix. So, yeah. Sink and Ship, that's the new song, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's the new uh, single, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say there's a, there's a irony to Nick's songs. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like we're trying to be a tribute actum. So two of his top songs on Spotify is Anything and Nothing, and my EP's coming out this year called All the Nothing. Is it? And oh. your most recent song is Sinking Ship. And James, what's one of the songs that you've been doing yeah. quite a bit? Sink This Ship. <laughs> Sink This Ship. <laughs> <laughs> we need to create a playlist. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you were telling me beforehand you went to London to do a bit of a show as well. Yes. Was that just yourself or was that with That was the a band? solo gig, yeah. Um, I've played there a few times. Um, first time I played at the Half Moon in Putney was a couple of years ago. Um, I was playing synth for um, Jenny LaSalle's, uh, Jenny LaSalle's oh, band. Oh, yeah. So I was, well, that's like a seven-piece band because she has a few more vocalists in her group and I was just offering like synth duties. So it's just part of her like live outfit really but great venue it's like it's like um like the Clooney, somewhere like that yeah oh, the nice. back line you've got a sound engineer really well organized well promoted it's i'd recommend it to any musicians or bands to get a gig slot down there but it's like a new one of their new music nights called the new moon new moon event right and it's <clears throat> every monday um and it, yeah, it's great. It was a good, always well attended. You know, for a Monday night in London, it, it packs out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really good. Um, but I recommend it to anyone to go and play because it's just just for the crap, really. You know, yeah, just getting yeah. out of the northeast and just playing other places. You know, yeah, that's. Um, so I think it's a good good thing for the soul, really. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just what what I kind of want to do a little bit more of, yeah. like getting out of the northeast a little bit more. Uh, do well, it's always it's, it's, it's a lot harder with a band though because mm. it's like especially a band when you're kind of like financially, out, it's kind financially of and our wage trying yeah. to get uh, yeah. even three people together in a room <laughs> is like incredibly hard. <laughs> Yeah. It's difficult, but um, yeah, we, we did it. I mean, when we played with Jen um, a few a few years back, we just got like the train back and booked into you know cheap accommodation. So it, it can be done, you know. Mm. And then obviously, I've spent another day there just having a bit of a mooch around the city and stuff. It's you know it's, it's worth doing. But um, I reckon next time I'll try and persuade the guys to come down. So yeah. I think they'll, they'll love it. I think they'll yeah, really yeah. enjoy it. You Absolutely. Know? Um, <clears throat> so that's you know. What it's about. Do they have the space to put on the full band? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a huge stage, and like like I said, I wasn't used to having like the sound engineers and roadies coming up setting everything up mm. for you. And I thought this is like an organised showcase night, and every 
it's very professionally organised, you know, just yeah. absolutely right on it, you know, uh, just with the setup and the timings and just just everything, you know, compared to I say maybe some of the nights up in the northeast, um, it you know it, it felt like an organised, not a busker's night, but you know, <clears throat> just very well put together. Yeah, and I'd recommend it to any any musician, like give, give it a give it a try, you know. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, so with your band yes what influences are in there what kind of sound would people expect to hear if they I think we come from it, it's rock pop mainly I guess we, we are kind of we come from an old school kind of I guess songwriters tradition I mean I, I was kind of brought up in bands like you know Pink Floyd and Genesis and Rush yeah. and always kind of progressive kind of rock bands um, mixed in with say like songwriters like Tom Petty and Paul Weller you know those kind of Neil Finn from Crowded House, so it's kind of old yeah. school kind of. So I think there's that kind of acoustic singer songwriter thing that comes across in, into the band, and maybe a little bit elements of kind of folk and blues music that yeah. kind of creeps in there. So I, I can't really pigeonhole it, but I know it, it's when people have seen and heard us, I think it kind of has an old school kind of yeah. vibe about it, you know, um, <clears throat> with a few little twists and turns in there. And I'd probably say I'm I'm not really. I say a singles kind of out, I say more of an album yeah. kind of act really. I, I think I, I kind of like to just push the boat out a little bit. Yeah, you know, I and, think and I, I like to do that. Like yeah, I know yeah, I know the thing is now it's like, oh let's release singles, singles, but I've always liked the like especially if the album's got like a specific theme around it, like yeah. a kind of um or, uh, like a similar emotion or similar <laughs> feeling. Just some kind of thread or something going yeah. through, like the, some kind of concept. I, I tend to kinda of ride on that a little so, bit. Yeah, sometimes mm-hmm. one song's not enough. Yeah. It's like uh <laughs> But I just like that. I like. I still think of it like when I make records. I, I'm a bit old school in that sense of like a body of work where I still think of it as side A and side B, and having I think of it in terms of the sequencing yeah. and that kind of thing. So for me, that's just kind of that excites me more when when you put nine, ten, twelve songs together. It's got to be a whole body of work rather than. Yeah. But I know. I know. Like trends, things have changed over the years in terms of how people consume yeah. music and singles, EPs, and it is exciting how the different ways that people can um, you know consume music these days but that's just that's just me I just mm. like that that way of working yeah you know? it's just no, absolutely um, yeah exactly yeah. the same it, it is one of them we like I, I did an album a couple years back and it looking back it, it feels more like a demo album um, which is where it was produced or just no I, I think I was kind of just like together. learning how to do it um, but I've just recorded a proper studio album as well and like it's it's one of them I've just released a single and it's doing all right but I'm at that point of the single is pretty good but it's just out by itself whereas I know when the album comes out I'll be like oh you like that song try this one and I've got like a good sequence and I think my favorite bit weirdly enough from doing that was sitting down when it was all done and then picking which order they're going to go in and yeah that's honestly fit. it's and it's, it's, it's a really weird thing OCD thing it's, it's such, such an underrated thing. thing like um people don't spend enough time on that because it's like you, you treat it as if you would like a like a set list at a live gig mm. yeah. that's what it is it's it's like you start off like strong and then you've got like the the peak in the middle then you then you, you slow it down a little bit then the end song is just like a cheerful well, i call that the curve yeah. i mean it's i'd like yeah, to call it it, it's what i call the curve where you're playing with the dynamic with the, uh, the, it's sometimes you can start you know you're going to start small you're going to start big you know and then if you're going to have a whole set list that's just going to be too slow and dirty, yeah. you're going to lose your audience. Yeah. But I do write a lot of slower songs, but we do have this other side, you know, of upbeat stuff. But I think you're right, the sequencing in a live set is like sequencing yeah. an album. I think it you is. have to kind of, it, it, you can spend days It's kind of think, that goes in and you move it down, or is that going to go at the end? And it, yeah, it can really make or break the, the flow. Yeah. And, even leaving songs off, yeah. there's, there's certain. It's very easy having yeah. it like over an hour, or do you edit it down to forty-five minutes and trying to keep the listener interested? You know, with, uh, with the you know, the sequencing, I guess. But that's really important. Certain albums, like some of my favourite albums, like um, you listen to it like back to front. There's like no skips. <coughs> you listen to it from the start to right to the finish. <laughs> But then if you were just like to to skip on the playlist and you'd hear one of those songs that were kind of in the middle of that album, you'd be like, oh, I'm not one that's not, not, so yeah, not feeling it. Yeah. So that it's kind of like it only makes sense when you listen to it within like the whole album. I think that's important. I mean, I, I don't know if it's just the way I listen and consume music, but I think that's what excites me when you listen to an album. I want to listen consume it as the whole thing. It was intended as you yeah. know, like those 35, 40, 45 minutes. It, it, it's there for a reason. It's been sequenced that way to yeah. kind of draw that. But I don't know if it's just 
consuming habits these days, people's attention spans. I don't know yeah. if it's just diminished somewhat it's definitely in, in recent years, but yeah, it's an attention span because I uh, <laughs> we put a, a noughties pop playlist on the other day yeah. in the car drive, um, and we were trying to play a game of right, see if you can guess the song. And it was taking about 40 seconds to get into like the first line. And yeah. it was like, songs back then used to have that bit of Good an intro. Introduction. Build I think up, that's yeah. been the yeah. lost art as well, you know. Whereas <clears throat> now it's like, if, if you're not talking in the first three seconds, people just skip. Yeah. <laughs> skip. <Yeah. laughs> I think it's a shame, really, but that, that's, that's just me. I just think, yeah. I don't know if other people think, think the same, but I think people's attention spans, uh, because of, I suppose, the internet and mm. how saturated it's all become, people need instant kind of gratification yeah. and certain things. I don't, you know, it's just... It just seems to be coming across that way these days, you know. Um, yes, I've, I've been been learning to do that, and like my recordings just get straight into it. Where if it, if it's live, it's not as important because people you are can there. You play with it a bit more, yeah. don't you? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Because I've got a loop pedal that takes two yeah. minutes to do every song. <laughs> 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 a big build, yeah. anyway. Imagine if you could skip a live performance, just like. <laughs> Does you guys use an a loop pedal as well? I've never used any of that in, I've, in I've, live I've, music. I've had loop pedals, but I've just. I've never really gotten. Never tried using them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've used them a few <laughs> times, but <laughs> yeah, but it's just yeah, it's never been like. No, it's just I don't know. I've, I've, I've never felt like I always speed up. I mean, it's probably the wrong thing to do, but I always like speed up in my You're songs. So when it gets to like the chorus and stuff, and I've still got the loop from the introduction, <laughs> it's like completely off. So I'm like, ah, oh, nah. Yeah, I get that. I use the entire pandemic to kind of teach myself loop pedal. Um, and then I realised all the songs that I had written beforehand weren't looping songs, so then I had to write a bunch of new songs that could fit the loop pedal. Um, <clears throat> but speaking of songwriting, just the last question on the first part. Yeah. This is our open personal section. So, what's the most personal song that you've written, and what's it about? Um, I mean, not, not, it's not just one song. I think most of my stuff is kind of up close and personal. I yeah. think, like as as a songwriter, I think. I, it's not real for me enough if it's not mm. personal I think a lot of stuff I draw from is quite immediate from like family and friends yeah very real situations so if I, I mean I can I task uh, James's mind back a couple of years ago when you were documenting our last yeah, album I remember that. <clears throat> and you, you came into um was it track track studios yeah. in, in North Shields Big up tracks. and we um oh, what were we doing it was you would document like track filming yeah. some of the process and stuff and then you were chatting to us about some of the songs and there was a few songs on the last album called last one get the lights um the very first song was called when and it was about the passing of my father-in-law <clears throat> and it was literally about when it happened at midnight and i remember when my wife got the call it mid you know came through and i remember the next couple of days just the guitar up and something just coming out of you within a few minutes yeah. Yeah. it's funny how something just comes quickly where you're really feeling something and yeah. but that particular song is probably a very very personal one because it was kind of not. it was kind of documenting what was happening in real time about yeah. we just lost losing a very close losing my father-in-law um, so I mean Sinking Ship's very personal that was kind of about um, during, during Covid and lockdown um, it was during the time where we, it was about how I think we, we didn't, we hadn't shut the, um, the borders down soon enough. And it was, yeah. you know, with, um, <clears throat> it was all kind of uh, personal sense that at the time, I remember writing that and my wife, she didn't get to see her dad's funeral. Uh, and she, she, she ended yeah. up watching it on WhatsApp. Yeah. And, like, and it, for me that was, made me very angry yeah, it yeah. was like and that's kind of where that song came from so a lot of my stuff does come from quite raw places but cool. I think um, for me that's what makes songs real you makes know? the best like, songwriters yeah that's yeah. kind of otherwise I feel like you're doing yourself a bit of a disjustice and I, yeah that's that's kind of how I write because I've got a lot of songs that come from those kind of places really yeah. So, yeah. Ah, that's good that's yeah. cool Like, well we're going to take a short break and we'll be back yeah, with some Q&A's yep after we this <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, we back. Keep trying to find more. What that, baby? <laughs> and welcome back. To there is the an audience, James, and they've just watched you do your. Oh yeah, three lies. That's completely <laughs> out of context. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, welcome back to side two of Off the Stage Podcast, your favourite grassroots musician chat show. Uh, I'm Connor Michael. This is James Berry, and we still have Nick Gladish. Hello. Um, so, part two is normally like Q and A kind of thing. Mm, okay. Uh, and whenever I've just got rid of it all, I'll find it. Um, what would you say your favourite gig story is? Either one that you've attended or played? 
God. I was going to get dead air now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a loaded question, isn't it? Because you're like... Uh, it's one of those, you're trying, you're trying to surf back, like, 20-odd yeah. years. Like. <laughs> um, I think one, one of my favourite gig stories, this is going way back to the 90s, actually. This is um, back in the day before Muse, Muse was signed, because um, I played a charity gig back in Devon at a bar called the Britannia. And um, I'd say that was one of my favourite gig stories because it was a band at the time we didn't know were yeah, going to go, guys. you know, stratospheric, yeah. like mm-hmm. playing stadiums. But we were just playing some charity gig. And I still got the newspaper cutting yeah. of my first band, Numb, and Muse on there, this little yeah. charity gig that we were playing. I'd say that was one of my favourite favorite gigs because it was just like anywhere around the North East, you know, it was just this, playing this unknown bar in Plymouth. You yeah. know, and uh, <clears throat> this band that none of us knew that we were going to catapult yeah. massive you know yeah um, yeah I've got um, a busking story uh, from when I used to go busking uh, 15 odd years ago I had a, a garden gnome put in my guitar case oh lovely before. yeah random but <laughs> yes what's the most random thing I've had? you know I've had a rose could have put money in you had what I had a rose once <laughs> um, I'm sure I've had something else daft I think somebody put like a, a can of JD and Coke in my case as well. Oh, that's nice of them. That was lovely. Now I had a woman take money out of my case once and then brag about it. Oh. <laughs> and then Birmingham just came over, took a pound, she's like, ah, I stole money from his case. Oh, ah, yeah. ha, ha, ha. So I'll since then... Chasing down the street, like, give it yeah. back. Since then, every time I made anything more than 50 pence, I put it in my pocket and just leave the rest on the, in the thing. The minds of, um, have you ever seen the film Once? Yes. Yeah. So he's, like bus- he's busking at the start, and then there's... Um, this guy comes and nicks his case with all his money, he's like chasing him down. <laughs> Eventually catches him and goes, What are you doing that for? Oh, sorry, man, you know. He goes, All right, tell mama I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Just like. <laughs> yeah. I've not seen that film in years. That's a good uh, film. I don't man. think I have, but I've, I've been sure told to. Seen watch it. It. Nah, I've been no, told to, but I've Honestly, never seen it. watch it. It's, it's such good. a good it's film. It's they made it into a stage show. Yeah, yeah it's stage. really popular. Yeah. 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 Len Hansard. He's the one who good played. Songs as yeah. well. Oh good yeah, songs. he's a good songwriter. And like, he's the one who played uh, "Fairy Tale of New York" for. I'm sure the, he was in. Have you, s- have you seen the Commitments? Yeah, he's yeah. in that. He's as well. in that, isn't he? Yeah. He was a guitarist, wasn't he? Yeah. In that from, I didn't realise that the connection. Yeah, and, like, and then, which is pretty cool. It's all proper, it's got a proper <laughs> huge grey beard now. It makes you feel right old when you're thinking like. <laughs> I've uh, the only films I've ever seen are Harry Potter's. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Red last night though. I like that film. Which one? <laughs> Red. Oh, <coughs> retired and extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah it's. Retired though, and like he gave up after the the young last got kidnapped. But oh. it was good. Yeah. Um, we got some Instagram questions for yourself. Um, going through order of them sent. One of your band members at Tom uh, John Timney Music said, "Would you rather fight one camel-sized hedgehog or a hundred hedgehog-sized camels?" <laughs> what? <laughs> What was the second one? What? Uh, fight one camel sized hedgehog or a hundred hedgehog sized camels. Camel sized hedgehogs. I can't say it. <laughs> camel sized like hedgehogs. That'll be like a flipping stegosaurus, that. Yeah. It would. That's Nah, I'm, I'm going like, to take the hundred minis, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Because what are they going to do? Spit on you like a little tiny. Exactly. Yeah. You could yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the hundred camel yeah. sized hedgehogs. Uh, Good question, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, camel sized hedgehogs. It still goes through. Uh, what's your least favourite item of cutlery? It's got some great questions, your John. Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, teaspoon. Yeah, because it's too small. Yeah, teaspoon. Because you can you can use a knife to to stir. I always use a knife to stir my. Uh, yeah. Do you? No, I don't. I have to <laughs> that, I've used a fork. Yeah. I'm just whisking my tea. You know. It depends. <laughs> yeah, it depends if it can be bothered to go into the drawer and get the teaspoon. But yeah, teaspoon is like the most pointless. No, absolutely. I, I, a tablespoon really. I think it's only for soups. Other than that, your teaspoon. A tablespoon ice cream. cream. I had a Ben and Jerry's. I say just use the teaspoon. Used for rice. What? <laughs> Rice, you can use spoon it once. If you if you cook it right, you can use <clears throat> chopsticks. Like, I do use chopsticks actually, but there you go. I can't <laughs> use chopsticks. I'm rubbish. But like out of all of them, I probably use the, the, the tablespoon the least. Oh, nice. Maybe for cereal from time to time. But like if I'm putting <coughs> tea, sugar in my tea, I'm not using tablespoons. I use knife and fork for my cereals. <laughs> or just use a ladle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spoon it all in it. Yeah. And with John goes, and last but not least, when roughly will the new record come out, and what's the process been like so far? It's a shame he's not here to explain it. Um, it's been a good process. We we started recording in August last year at uh, Sunderland University, mm-hmm. which I think well John's a lecturer there, isn't he? So he's, he, <clears throat> we, we were quite lucky to set up the night before, 
and we cut everything organically to click track so we did everything as a band like we did at track yeah. studios so oh, we did oh, yeah. same kind of thing all set up with monitors and just yeah. tracked everything live um, cut everything to click and then we started overdubbing things October last year so yeah we just started to do all the fun creative overdubbing and things so the plans to release the new album Tea and Sympathy um, early September we're pretty much there I think we're just putting out a few singles at the minute so obviously Sinking Ship at the minute which is out now um, and then we're putting a new one out uh, what is it? in April time April the 21st we're <clears throat> aiming to gig at the um, engine room over at the fish, fish yeah. key so we're kind of organising that at the minute oh, yeah. so it might be another small tour like this one that I've just done just to kind of new songs so yeah. that's that's the plan anyway so it's that's a decent it. venue in there engine room i've not played i've not been there before but it's, yeah. it looks like a nice place to play you know when they see philip jonathan it's a nice yeah. uh it's cozy yeah but it's, uh, it's, it's good i mean I don't, is it as big as this is it quite half the size is um it it's probably about this size actually yeah, 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 yeah. without without the tables it's about like 60 capacity or something but yeah. quite engaging it's quite enough. a good size because like little bills is, is, is probably about it feels like a quarter of this at least yeah but it's good. It's a big, open, like it's it's kind of like little buildings. But like this, uh, instead of uh, the entrance, there's um there's like a bar. But the yeah. entrance is like halfway in, kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's like a little husband. bunker. You go down and it's just underneath. Down some stairs, yeah. 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 It's just nice. Like it's, it's warm. Yeah. It's one of the few music venues Cozy. we've got left, yeah. really. But you know, in terms of original, it's good to see that you know these venues are still trying to yeah. showcase 100%. stuff. You know. Um, two more for Instagram. At Mrs Berry Insta said, "Who's your favourite band member?" <laughs> you said that, John. Uh, no, cat. cat. <laughs> Ooh, depends on the day, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he's done watching their, this. He's, he's done their homework. Yeah. <laughs> They're looking at the screens now, just going, "Say me." <laughs> Adam, at the minute, yeah. <laughs> he's just really funny. He's yeah. just, his stories are fantastic. It's a shame he's not here today because some of his stories are like, just so funny. Yeah. Like, when we've travelled anyway, he just absolutely cracks me up. Like him and Tim, just. It's hilarious, you know. <clears throat> it could be John tomorrow because he's done some great production. Yeah, Shannon, yeah. For, Shannon for the great harmonies. You See, know? You know, it's, <laughs> it's John's the person. Like you know it's how hard it is to find a drummer. Yeah. And then you know how hard it is to find like a good producer. And then John's like both. <laughs> he's done in. He's it, you know I didn't. I first met John. I think it was a surf cafe about six seven yeah. years. It might have been the surf cafe or he was he was a depth drummer for the um, for a wedding band I was in at the time and I just met him. In the car, we were traveling somewhere, and uh, I just <clears throat> not yeah. He's such a brilliant drummer. Like he's you know he, he plays everything, doesn't he? Like every style you could just throw at him. He's just so on it. Yeah. But he all can. That's a brilliant musician. Like I yeah. mean, um, and he yeah as a producer as well, engineer. I'm very lucky. Like the guys have come back to to cut some more songs with us. You know they seem to enjoy the stuff enough to be involved again on, an, on another yeah. project so because I know everyone's so busy with so many different things that they've come back to you know be a part of it it's yeah. like it's brilliant but um, yeah it's, I'm just very lucky <laughs> to have, have them on board and be, be involved in the process you know but yeah he's, he's sought after like John John and Adam I'd say one of the best rhythm sections in the North East like, oh, yeah. just, uh, so by, by and to have them tonight at this gig it's just like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm the lucky one yeah man <laughs> Um, last question from Instagram is at James Bruin, which is clearly James Brown. Uh, what inspired them to start learning an instrument slash making music? So, what was the moment where you went, "I want to get into music"? What kind of? Uh, what well, in terms of this is terms of just taking up an instrument or songwriting? So or general, really, like just picking up an instrument, and going, yeah. "Oh, this is so." I, I was, I mean, I'm 44 years old now, but I was seven when I first started learning. I was classically like yeah. as a piano player, so it was like. I remember mum just dragging me up the hill, you know, to like piano lessons and stuff. So I kind of came from a classical thing, but then I had the ear. For me, it was like listening to my mum and dad's vinyl and the cassettes. Yeah. They were well into their music. I was they were playing me all kinds of all kinds of bands, from like Carole King and Nina Simone to you know, Floyd and Rush, and you know, it was such an eclectic mix of yeah. the stuff they were playing me. And I would just sit at the piano and literally like take the needle off the vinyl and just you know or a cassette rewind a bit of a song that I loved and just play it back and go oh, I could just try and learn that you know and for me it was when I was I say nine or ten years old that really I got my interest in just improvising playing yeah. stuff yeah and it was from then that I um probably my dad played a bit of guitar so he taught me a bit of bass or my first few chords on a, on a guitar you know your G's and your C's and stuff you know yeah. and I think from my teen years onwards it was like um, 
I was just hooked. I was still doing, learning how to read, read music and stuff, but it was, for me, it was more about the ears and just being with mates and just sitting in your mates' bedrooms just playing yeah. music together or having a spare moment at lunchtime where you would just sit and, and you know, jam, jam stuff out. And it, it kind of came from there, really, as, as a teenager. Uh, yeah. And ever since, I've not looked back. It's just been a love of writing, recording and performing, you know, yeah. the, the, the hunger's still there. So, but it was, yeah, it was definitely back then. Yeah. I'd say nine or 10 years old that I was absolutely hooked. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> um, and finally, we've got three questions from last week's guest, who was? Okay. Last week guests was, um, was it? No, um, it was. Um, it was someone. Um, it was ben, 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 Ben Brannan. <laughs> it was Ben Brannan. <laughs> I was thinking because you know what I was. I was thinking. Um, I was thinking Sapien Records, isn't it? But that was last because I'm getting confused because we we'll do ISIS and we we'll do here now. But Ben Brannan last the ship ISIS in yeah. Sunland. Yes. Is that where you did you have a podcast? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where we usually do the. Uh, we do here Thursdays yeah. now, so it's like makes it. I played there a couple of years ago back with Tim, our guitarist, so a nice little venue. It like is a really nice It kind of reminds me of here, like that kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah, you know? worldy kind of a <laughs> cool little vibe. Um, but yeah, Ben says, the first question is, who's your dream band to support? Uh, I, I suppose it's, there's three. If, if these bands were still going, it would be Pink Floyd or Rush or someone like that. Like, yeah. For me, like those old school kind of bands. Like, I mean, they're not, obviously they're disbanded, but yeah, they're, for me, they're like phenomenal. Like, I've, this one might be a thinker, but top of your head. Okay. What's your dream festival lineup? Three headliners and three support acts. Uh, Neil Finn, I think Neil Finn. I think he's for me. You got a headline, yeah? Yeah, I yeah. think he's just phenomenal solo and, and with Crowded House. I think he's just a, a genius songwriter. Um, I suppose in my mind, some of these guys are dead. <laughs> get them back from the grave. <laughs> so, like, we'll get uh, Tom. We'll get someone to revive them, like yeah, just get Mancy kind of shit. Just one night turn into a hologram or something. Yeah. Thing. Um, Tom Petty, if he was still alive, oh, yeah, like, I think phenomenal. He'd gone before his days as another headliner. Um, Lloyd, if I was still going as headliners, support acts. Um, you really put me on the spot, here, is it? You know when you get each other oh, things. Yeah. So I like all kinds of music. Um, Local acts, local acts need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. do a local, yeah. Jenny LaSalle's band, I think she needs yeah. to. Yeah, I yeah. think she's fantastic. And she's coming from out. Jenny LaSalle's, I think Shannon, Shannon Pearl. I know she sings in that band, but I love her new album, Kiss the Ground. I think as a support act, she'd be amazing. And I, when we went to see her at the um, Independent, you guys are phenomenal. Like, that was a great gig. And I, I think, that, uh, what a show. I just yeah. think, get them a festival slot. Like, um, <clears throat> And there's another act, um, Maria and James, who I met six months ago. Maria, fantastic voice, James, brilliant musician, and they're just coming through the ranks, I think. Yeah. Get them booked, because I think they're fantastic. Right? So, well, more we'll shout out for the local acts, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Damn right. We're going to get James and Kat to edit this next clip, but there's a good shout for a content <laughs> thing. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Um, <laughs> for anybody who's watching this clip, which I'm hoping is what it'll be, um, comment below three mainstream headline acts and then three local musician artists you want to see support. I'm quite interested to see what yeah, yeah, that would be. be. That'd be yeah. okay. Um, and then we just need three questions for next week's guest, but we'll get that from me in the break. Okay. And we'll take a short little break now. Nice. See you in part three. <laughs> Go on, James. <laughs> Hey, this is Busted, and you've been listening to Off The Stage. Okay, um... We're back, baby! <laughs> Welcome back to Off The Stage Podcast. Myself, Connor Michael, this is James Berry, and this is Nick Gladish, and we're in part three. <coughs> Excuse me. So, part three is normally about what's coming out. So, just speaking on the live stuff, obviously, yes. as I said <coughs> before, this episode's out on the 12th of March, yes. and from then onward. Um, what upcoming shows and songs have you got that you want to give a little shout out to? Um, so yeah, so f I suppose from the 12th of March onwards, we're promoting a new single called It Will Be Fine, She Said, which we're, we're coinciding with a gig on at the Engine Room on the 21st of April, over at the Fish Key, North Shields area. Yeah. So that'll be the next single that we're pushing from the Ooh, new album. Sunday. 
It's a Sunday, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And it's not it's not a late one. I think it'd be like from half six to like half eight, nine. So it's kind of very reasonable, yeah. you know, on a, on a Sunday. But I've heard a lot of good things about the engine room. So I, I, I approached the guys and said, look, can we put on a show here, like a, a single launch, essentially. And I'm also doing a gig on the, actually before the 21st, on the 11th of April, I'm going back to Devon to do, to play the B-Bar in Plymouth, which is just a solo thing. So there might be a few more gigs coming in April but they're, they're the two at the minute so Fantastic. the 11th of April at B-Bar in Plymouth and the 21st at the, at the Engine Room in uh, uh, the Fish Key North Shields yeah so they're the two dates that I'm pushing at the minute so. Fantastic <laughs> Any updates on songs anything or is it just so you say maybe September um, <clears throat> September yeah we, we looked at late spring summer but I think because the guys I think Shannon's I think she's got a headline thing coming in June, um, so we're all kind of kind of coordinating our our time and, and, yeah. and agendas and things. But the aim is early September to put put Tea and Sympathy out the album. Yeah. But we're pretty much, I mean, John was saying the other day, I think we're eighty five percent there now. So um, we're just kind of adding fine tweaks and backing vocals and bits and pieces. Yeah. And I think there's one more song to record, but we're pretty much there with it. Um, I've also been making another album up in Rothbury, <laughs> more piano, more stripped back. Yeah. But you talked about folk. Is that the uh, old church? Studios? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great place, well, Ian, Ian, uh, Ian, is it Ian Stevenson? He, he's been producing that one. So it was just another project away from the band where I wanted to record on a real baby grand piano. And we, I started recording that a year ago where I was recording, um, recording the piano and vocals live. So we were literally cut recording freely, and then we've been overdubbing other keyboard parts like organs, harmoniums. There's a bit of a folk thing yeah, coming in on cool. it, so it's a different feel. Um, a double bass, and I've tried to go for an album that's very exposed and, and slow and very, you know, quite vulnerable and quite. But that's the other project. But that's yeah. not out yet. But yeah, it's kind of. I might put the two albums together. I don't know yet. But yeah. It could be. I'm a bit ambitious. So it's, yeah. So it's my dilemma. It's like, dude, what do you, what what do, you, do, do, yeah. what do, you do? I could be too ambitious. Going, yeah. What are you doing? You know, yeah. it's like too much. But yeah, I know it's a possibility. That sounds good. Um, and just finally, if you've got any local artists you can give a shout out to, somebody who's watching this can go follow them and. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a big fan of Kieran Taylor's stuff, not only because I, I gig him, but he's he's fantastic. Um, really Great big fan of his tall shaves. Tall shaves, yeah. Um, Supporting my gig at the Clooney. Yeah, keep an eye out for he's that. he's been great. Actually, he's been he's been been great with my local career in the last couple of um, years. Actually, just where I've been covering a lot of his nights when he's not been able to do it, yeah. and just at the you know, passing clouds and other other gigs and yeah. stuff. So he's been great. So cheers, Kieran. Um, yeah, you're, you're Connor because basically the reason, the only reason I play these places is because uh, Connor says, "Oh, do you fancy uh, doing a duel with me?" He's like, "I'll go," and then I'll. Uh, got one. My but entire career is basically come, Connor. Do you, do you find it all comes at once, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I find like in the last absolutely. Few years, like, everything's happening at once, or it doesn't at yeah. all. It's just at the minute, it's just really busy, which is great. I'm not 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 whinging, like, but it's it is good. It's. I'm a shout out to um, Tim Higgins of a band, my guitarist, his other band, Soulcade, for like an Afro progressive funk. Um, four piece, five piece, um, and they're fantastic. Um, Jenny Lascelles, um, I think, amazing artist, singer, songwriter. Do check her out; she's brilliant. Um, Maria and James, again, I've only known them for like five, five, six months, but they've got a new album out called Chapters, um, and I think that, that's a great record. So check them out. There's so much. There's so much out there. I think people just don't realise how many. Yeah bands and yeah. songwriters that we know just on the North East circuit there's so it's much crazy. out there you know yeah. and, and there's such a wealth of talent you know um, yeah, it's yeah. but they're, they're my shout outs at the minute because I, yeah brilliant. and then final shout out for yourself what are your socials for people to come and find you online um, <clears throat> well I'm not on TikTok <laughs> but I'm on Instagram so at Nick Gladish Music and um, you find me on, on Facebook Nick Gladish Music Instagram um, I'm on Spotify it's all Nick Gladish music, so you should be able to find us. Um, but yeah, go and find us, have a listen, and uh, go and like our page, and um, come and see us. Come see us at a show in April. Brilliant. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much for coming down, mate. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Um, for anybody who hasn't already followed us, we are at Off the Stage UK. You can find us on Instagram, Spotify, Twitter, etc., etc. Um, if you would like to submit any songs for Song of the Week, you can email us at. Well, it's not at, is it? It's just OTS submissions at outlook.com code uk yeah something like that is it it's something like that ots submissions at outlook.com it sounds like that i'm trying to find it yeah but i've lost it so i'm sure it's there somewhere 
We'll put it on the. It's a dot com, is it? Oh, if you put, oh, you put, you, uh, producer cat puts on the screen you anyway. Any so you want to check out, put it on there. We do a song of the week and then a song of the month, and we will do a song of the year. Um, tune in every week. We have a gig guide every Monday and a new episode every Tuesday, and loads of content throughout the rest of the week. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks down. for having us. Um, final question: What song are you going to play for us next? Uh, Sinking ship. Yeah. Which is the new single? So. I know, yeah. it's pretty good. We've already heard it. Yeah. See you next time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Thank you very much, Thank man. you. Cheers, Cheers James.